Uh, welcome to this session of the conference. The discussion will center around uh, First Act 77, Second World Black and African Festival of Arts and um, Culture, Lagos. Interestingly, it um, dovetails with the earlier discussion in the day. And uh, personally, I think uh, I felt that one or two issues were not um, fully addressed. I hope that the time we come to the question and answer uh, session of this one, some of those issues may come up. Um, I don't want to take much of our time. Uh, some of us were very small when uh, first tack was done. It was um, so much entertainment for us as kids and we re remember it with so much uh, nostalgia. Um, we have two speakers for this session. Uh, the first, uh, well, the way it's going to operate, uh, we are going to operate is 60 minutes in total, uh, five minutes for introductions, um, 15 minutes presentation by uh, Uluwa Bumi Ayo Bami Amao, 15 minutes um, by Cal uh, Calvin Wright, 15 minutes di discussion between the two speakers, and 10 minutes for uh, question and answers. Um, first of all, I start with um, Uluwa Bumi. Um, Ayobami Amao. Oluwabumi Ayobami Amao is the Director General and um, CEO of the Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization, CBAC, based in Lagos, Nigeria, before her appointment to this position. Oluwabumi served as Special Advisor on Culture and Tourism to the Executive Governor for your state in southwest Nigeria from 2011 to 2015. She's a passionate promoter of African arts, culture, and heritage with special interest in museum management. She had had uh, tertiary education at different institutions, including Rickmont College, Surrey, London, Syracuse uh, University, among others, she served as group managing director of Joas Group of company in, Companies in Nigeria for over a decade. Oluwabumi is a fellow of the Institute of Tourism Professionals um, in Nigeria. So I think um, you start. Um, Later, I will introduce um, um, Calvin Raid at the point he will speak. So, over to you. Hello. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, everybody. Como um, savu or something like that? <laughs> I'm Oluwabumi Ayobami Amao. I'm the Director General of Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization in Lagos. I'm very grateful for um, the people that invited me here. I really gained a lot yesterday and even part of this morning. It was really nice coming here. Um, I'm to speak on contemporary African arts and African continuity in the diaspora. That is the perspectives on First Act 77 Museum Collection. This thing is not. Okay. CBAC, that is the Center for Black and African Art and Civilization, was established by 
the Nigerian government in 1979, following the successful and epoch-making hosting of the second World Black and African Festival of Art and Culture, that is Festac 77. The center houses all the materials which constitute the core collections and those artifacts and real cultural items that were used during First Act 77. The decision to hand over these materials to Nigeria was reinforced and built upon the gains of the historic festival. The center is charged with the responsibility of promoting and propagating black and African arts and cultural heritage in totality. CBAC will be holding a cultural fiesta to mark the 45th anniversary of First Act 77 at 45 in November 2022. Coincidentally, this year, uh, First Act is 45 years since it was held. The event is tagged celebrating black and African art and civilization that is reliving first tax 77 at 45. We are preparing for the 50th anniversary after this one. It is designed to be a week long event packed with activities to showcase diverse African and other cultural expressions and entertainment. The event will afford artists and culture practitioners on both the African continent, the diaspora, as well as the other countries of the world, the platform to showcase and promote their diverse creative expressions, elements, products, and art forms. I'm starting the abstract now. The dominant atmosphere at the period leading up to the hosting of the second World Black and African Festival of Art and Culture, First Act 77, was that of the, the rediscovery and rekindling of, this, of those cultural, historical, and spiritual ties which bind together black and African peoples globally. This was reflected in the entire fabric of the epoch-making festival and its activities, which included art exhibition, drama, music, dance, popular dressing, film, doba, boat regatta, and colloquium, which drew participation from black and African artists, scholars, and intellectuals from both the continent and the diaspora. Of significance, in the museum collection of the Center for Black and African Art and Civilization, CBAC, are works by notable artists from African diaspora emanating from First Act 77. Using selected artworks from Cuba, the Caribbean, and Australia exhibited at First Act 77 in the museum collection of CBAC, this paper attempts an analysis of African continuities in the diaspora. The work focuses on and captures the cultural, historical, and spiritual ties which bind together black and African peoples as embedded in their artworks. The paper aims at establishing the artistic and creative similarities shared by artworks, artists of African origin, and those of the diaspora in the collection emanating from First Act 77. The work highlights salient features of African continuity in the diaspora in the area of art. It reveals that despite the dispersal of the African peoples all over the globe, their arts bear testimony to the kinship ties that exist between Africans in Africa 
and those in the diaspora. History reveals the deep need of all men for roots and self-expression, for belonging to and identifying with the community that has a memory of its parts. This was said by Jerry Perry et al. The dispersion of Africans, especially during the transatlantic slave trade, has led to the establishment of African communities in many continents, especially in Western world. Thus today, we find African communities in Europe, America, the Caribbean, and even Latin America. The quotations cited above perhaps capture the atmosphere at the run-up of the Austin of the Second World Black and African Festival of Art and Culture, Festac 77. The general mood at this time was that of the rediscovery and rekindling of those cultural, historical, and spiritual ties which bind together black and African peoples globally. This reflected in the activities that featured during the festival, especially the arts exhibitions. In CBAC, that is the Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization, the section where these collections are preserved and exhibited is the Pan-African Heritage Museum, which encompasses the art of the entire black race. Some of these collections have, they have similarities in functions and structure, showing the oldness in black and African artistic appreciations. I'm going to, my first one is the traditional bata from Nigeria and Cuba. On my left is the bata drum made from leather, ashoki, twine and wood. And this is from Nigeria. On my left is the bata drum which is made from leather, twine and wood. And this is from Cuba. The bata drum is a traditional set of drums used by the Yoruba people in southwest, southwest Nigeria, used as a speech surrogate, and it is associated with Shogo, Eshu, Egungun, Oya, and other Orisha, which is idol. This is also common in the diaspora, specifically the equivalent of it from Cuba, form part of Festac 77 collections. The similarities is striking with a little difference due to the material used in making them, but they serve the same purpose for rituals and worship of the gods pointing to African continuity in the diaspora. The second one is the Aboriginal art and African rock art. On my, on my left is the Aboriginal art from Australia, which is made from the back of tree. On my right, um, right is rock art, which is made from the rock and is from Tanzania. Tanzania. Then the Aboriginal art is the expression of art of the black indigenous Australian people based on folklore painting. They have deeper level of meaning and have intricate system of visual system symbols which act in the context of the painting as words. African art, African rock art shares its similarities with the Aboriginal art. There's a similarities in the use of art colors the different shade of brown and burnt umber that is indicative of mud. The dots and line are lined with black from charcoal and white from chalk, which are predominant colors mostly used in the cave, prehistoric rock art paintings and the Aboriginal tree bark paintings. 
Another striking resemblance is the use of zoomphoric forms in expressing their art. This is yet another pointer to African continuity in the diaspora, as evident in the similarities of their artwork. The third one is the Kula Nut Bowl from Nigeria and the Kula Mons Bowl from Aus Aboriginal Australia. The one on my left, left is the Kula Nut Bowl from Nigeria and is made from wood. And the Kula Mons Bowl is from Australia and is made from wood too. Kula Nut Bowl is most probably used as offering vessel or serving dishes for cola, cola nut, or other food. Their social use and status is important in Nigerian hospitality. Comparatively, is the oval carved Kula Mons Bowl of Aboriginal Australia, which were traditionally used by Aboriginal women to carry fruits and nuts. The bowls are carved in similar forms, except for the different motifs engraving which adorn their surfaces. Then the fourth one is the Bele de Yemoja, Yemoja and its titled Dance of Yemaya. It's carved from wood and is from Cuba. This Dance of Yemoja is a sacred dance among the worshippers of the river goddess. This practice is peculiar among a selected cult in Yoruba culture. Yearly, they offer thanks to Yemoja or Yeyeoshun, regarding her as the mother of all gods. There is a continuity of this practice in Cuba and Brazil by some of the Yoruba descendants. The tradition was brought over 100 years ago by the enslaved and free Africans who are regarded as Lukumi and consider Yoruba language, uh, they consider Yoruba language as a sacred language of the gods. It is an important way for them to celebrate their roots and believe and believe regardless of their location. The fifth one is Ma'asin, that is the reappears with daughters and is made from oil on canvas and is from Jamaica. This painting is an impressionable painting by Ossi Murray, a British Jamaican born artist. He migrated to England along with other West Indies in the early 1960s. Despite spending time in the Western world, his paintings always depict pilgrimage to Africa, acknowledging Africa as the root of every black race. The sixth one is the Congo Pygmies. Okay. The Congo Pygmies twins and a Ray Ibeji from Cuba. The one on my um, left is the Ibeji twin in Yoruba and is made from wood and cloth and the, is from Cuba. The other one on my right is the Congo Pygmies twins made from wood and beads and is from Congo. In Africa, Twins are considered to have a spiritual and economic importance. It is believed that they attract both, both good fortunes when well taken care of and bad luck when neglected. Among the pygmies of Congo, the bat of twins has long stood out from many other bats, due likely to the various religious aspect involved. In a sense, the bat of twins is distinguished from other bats. The Ere Ibeji figurine of a male and female twins 
is a West African retention in Brazil and Cuba. This twins carved wood is revered among the Yorubas in Africa and in diaspora, especially in Cuba and Brazil, as they are considered as gifts from Orisha, that is God, to protect their family from evil. And the seventh one is the weaving artistry from Nigeria and Cuba. On my left is the footwear made from raffia and is from Cuba. And on my right is the ornament bag made, made from palm fronts and from, is from Nigeria. The basket weaving is a traditional art in Nigeria, varying from materials and tribe and shapes. It is, it's, it's gone. Sorry, the connection is. The basket weaving is a traditional art in Nigeria, varying from material, tribes, and shape. It is passed from one generation to the next. People in Sokoto, northern Nigeria, are renowned for basket weaving. For decades, the people have broadened the art of making this artistic item made from palm fronts for holding and carrying things. Weaving artistry is a craft that holds a very high economic value in West Africa. These practices have been, have been transported and practiced by blacks in Cuba. Their uses ranges, range from ornaments, home accessories, to building materials, to furniture. The dispersion, in conclusion, the dispersion of Africans, especially during the transatlantic slave trade, has led to the establishment of African communities in many countries, especially of the Western world. Thus, today, we find African communities in Europe, America, the Caribbean, and even Latin America. The results of these continuities are evident in the retention of the artistic creations that are quite similar to Africa and African diaspora. Material collection in terms of art emanating from First Act 77 eloquently bear testimony to this assertion. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much for your presentation and for the uh, judicious use of time. Um, unfortunately, I'm told we have lost the other speaker online. So um, we we'll go straight to the uh, discussions. Uh, like I said earlier, First Act 77 um, came and went. Uh, for me, uh, I find a link between it and what was discussed in the morning, the 1966 uh, festival, which happens to be the first. The, what worries me is um, um, what was the reason for holding first act. The rumors uh, we had, or the story we had, was that uh, Nigeria had too much money <laughs> at that time, and the head of state said, "What? how do we spend it? And some people said, why don't we uh, organize this? And they organized the first stack. Uh, I've been disappointed personally at some of the issues uh, emanating from first stack because I thought uh, it, it's something that should have generated so much discussion and also begotten um, other similar events. Uh, somebody asked, I think it was the moderator in the morning who was asking why, um, I mean, why has other things not happened? Why are we where we are today? Um, interestingly, from Dakar, you have Dakar. It's possible to link it, you know, as uh, some of the outcomes of uh, having Senghor as president there and having the 1966 um, 
festival as a Nigerian and an African, I want to, I would want to understand why uh, Festac just came and went and fizzled out and not much has happened. Apart from CBAC, which you heard, uh, <coughs> which have been there over the years, um, I, I'm not sure very, uh, so much has happened as outcome of the organization of uh, Festac. The place you call Festac Town today in Nigeria was built actually during Festac yeah. to house some of the people there. For some of us as kids, we went to the television. In those days, it wasn't very common for middle class families to own television. So we, as kids, we, have to, we had to find where uh, families which had television, if you didn't have one, to be able to watch Miriam Makeba and some other people uh, perform. So it was more of entertainment. But uh, we are not sure whether it was organized purely for entertainment. I don't think so. And uh, the question is, for me personally, what have we gained from FESTAC? Is it that the people who organized it did not really know the essence of what they did? Or is it that um, uh, other generations after them did not make good of what the Obasanjo uh, administration uh, did. Uh, for a country that held first act in 1977, one would expect that the art sector, art and culture sector, even tourism se sector, uh, would be better organized than it is today in Nigeria, but it's not. You find out that um, much of what happens today uh, in the art sector, culture, tourism, is more of the efforts of um, uh, the private sector, uh, individual galleries, uh, people trying to make a living and also in the process uh, making some uh, useful and important uh, exertions um, in, the, in the community otherwise. Um, Art is so much neglected in Nigeria. I normally say it's a minority enterprise, and that is what it is. But when you look back and see what the government put in in 1977, one will think that today Nigeria will be much further than where it is in terms of the um, appreciation of art, promotion of art, and so on and so forth. And we also have to think of the AU, what are they doing? Because uh, in the morning we mentioned Dakar and so on. Uh, Dakar is mainly funded by um, uh, the European Union, if I'm, not, if I'm correct. Um, but at the same time, you have to praise and commend the spirit of the Senegalese government for holding out, ensuring that it has happened for over two, about two decades, over two decades. That's um, something, even if they are not footing uh, all the bill or much, much of the bill. So I hope that as we discuss, some of these issues will um, come in. What happened or what was and what is the intellectual uh, content of uh, first tack and how has um, uh, some of uh, uh, much of that content been upheld and um, preserved for the future and then why have we not been able to move from there why did it come as a kind of uh, once for all um, uh, entertainment jamboree if you want to use the word um, uh, but at the same time um, we want to know what the AU is doing as a body to safeguard 
and promote uh, culture. Yesterday, somebody was asking, I think it was Raphael, why do we have to always come to Europe? and America to talk about African art and culture. I think the same question, the same issues may also come up if we take it very critically uh, that um, the problem we have at home is that of sustenance, the ability or inability to sustain um, efforts and projects is always a, a hit and run uh, kind of thing, and that is why we keep uh, going back in the same circle, um, trying to do the same thing over and over and over, you know, as if, um, you know, the world is one small stage and we have to, as black people, operate in it like uh, some sort of uh, clowns. I'm sorry to use that word, but that is what it is. So it's open for uh, comments, questions from the audience. Uh, yes, I just have a, a simple question, and uh, I hope it wasn't answered in the earlier presentation uh, today, and, and perhaps I missed it. It's about the, the archive and the organizational record of the event. Um, is that uh, maintained by the institution that was set up? Yes. Um, so for, from a practical, I'll give one practical example. Uh, can one access a list of the artworks, the visual artworks that were actually exhibited at FESTAC? Because I've been trying to clarify the Mozambican representation and I've been finding it quite difficult. I mean, is there actually a list and is that list uh, accessible? Thank you. We have all the tapes of um, FESTAC in Center for Black and African Arts. What we are doing now is, you know, during that time, it was in this big, what was it called? That big... Um, National big, Theater. No, 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 no. The recording. You know, we now use um, DVD and all that. Okay, the, the, the real. The real, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real. So mm -hmm. we are now... Um, what we are now doing is to change it from that to DVD and CD. So you can easily, now when you come in, you can watch um, maybe people from Ethiopia dancing or their drama, people from Nigeria, people from Congo. We all have that. And we have all the colloquium in our archive. So when you come to Nigeria and visit Sibak, there's nothing about... I mean, First Act 77 that you don't get to see or to know about when you come there. We all have everything there. Yes, we do. If you give me your address, I mean your address and email, we'll send everything to you. So you can even come to Nigeria and um, see the place and make a visit. Yeah. And eat jollof rice. <laughs> and eat jollof rice. <laughs> so you are welcome any day. But meanwhile, we'll send everything to you. Whatever you want to know about First Act 77. We have everything in our archive. Thank, yes, thank, Raphael. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank, thank you for raising a very important question in terms of... Uh, why there was never another FESTAC. Why but what? Why was they, I mean, there was a hit and run, the one event that happened and it was never repeated. So my question possibly comes to you, madam, to say, you are now looking after this archive. Yes. As an institution. Mm. Well, you talked about the, uh, in November that you'll be hosting. 45th anniversary. 45th anniversary. Mm. And um, where are you getting the funding? And uh, is there any plans to also continue to have the first tag? Yeah. So much that at least there is um, continuity. And what uh, uh, Chris raised in terms of AU, the African Union, and many other festivals that happened that uh, still have remained as a memory 
to both uh, the previous scholars and the current scholars and the future scholars. So it will be very interesting to see what will transpire in November and in the future. Okay. Um, what we are doing now, we've got in touch with AU, we've got in touch with UNESCO, and um, the Foreign Affairs Minister, is, um, what is, his own role was to get all the embassies in Nigeria involved because there's no way we can now like bring in 15,000 people. You know about 15,000 people came for Festac 77. It's not possible, especially when we've just gone through COVID-19. So what we are doing now is all the 59 countries that came for the first Act 77 and all other countries that want to participate, we are trying to get in touch with all of them through their embassies and their community in Nigeria to participate in this week-long 45th anniversary. It's from that 45th anniversary that will now decide which country will host the Third World um, Festival of Art in, uh, when, the, when it's 50 years. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that is what we are doing now. And to me, it's not that it's a one-off thing or something like that. Yes, there was money in in 1977. And you will know, notice that it depends on the um, administration, the management, the leaders, that maybe the leaders from Obasanjo time to now, they are really not interested in arts. Because if they are, they should not leave First Act 77 and not do anything for 45 years. So it depends on the leadership of that country. So what we are now doing now is to bring back all the blacks and all the African countries together and say, look, this is an avenue for us to come together as blacks, to come together and do a lot of things together like the way they did it in 1977. So it's what we are working on. And fortunately, we've been able to um, get in touch with the vice president who is really interested in it. And we are going to come up with something and 50 years will be a big one. It's not, we might not do it in Nigeria, we might do it in, and that is when we'll decide in November which country will host. It will be like Olympics when they decide, oh, this is the country that will host this, this year or in two years' time or in five years' time. That's the way we want to be doing it now, to bring the blacks together. Well, I think that generally um, African countries and uh, leaders have not taken seriously the issue of, of art. Um, yes of art because some of the energy it's part of why I don't watch football in Africa because they they do it because Europe has put so much energy in football and they are making so much money from it but you find out that we don't put the same energy we put in football in other things so it's a, it's a, it's a problem and mind you that um, this government in Nigeria is going, whether it's going to be APC or it's going to be PDP, the fact remains that by next year uh, they don't have much time. So uh, at our own level, we may be planning and looking forward for them. It's a different um, set of uh, concerns. That's why I said uh, it, is, now, it has to do with leadership. And, and, uh, and I think uh, you may not be in a position to speak for the prospective country that may want to <laughs> host it because we are not in their pocket. So the, 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 the issue I think for Nigeria is to, uh, the question should be what are we making from the archives as um, Mario said. Mm -hmm. A lot can be done with the archives. Spending 
whether uh, uh, when another country comes up to 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 host you know um, my children for instance many students in the university they do not even know that something of that magnitude ever happened uh, in Nigeria. So I think uh, there's a lot we can do by um, um, using the archive to sensitize people to let, I talk about for, um, the philosophy of forward to the past, letting people know what has happened so they'll be able to find their way uh, through the future. So. We have very little time. We have one question coming from yeah. behind. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I had a question about, first I've heard that there was a lot of uh, kind of uh, fighting between Senegal and Nigeria over the organization of FESTAC, and I was wondering if you could. I can't tell you. Uh, there was a lot of tension between Senegal and Nigeria over the organizing of the festival, right? And I was wondering <laughs> if you could talk a little bit about that. And then the other question I had is about organizing this third festival, um, I wonder what the role of North Africa or kind of, you know, um, non-black, I would say, Africa, not that Africa, North Africa isn't also black, but um, in that festival. Yes, oh, okay. The, the, the huh? rivalry between Senegal and Nigeria in organizing FESTAC and what will the third one, um, uh, look like who and who will it encompass? I think to me there should not be any rivalry no, as long talking as about yes, the one, the, that, one mm, the one before. Mm, mm. I think Senegal hosted the first one, first black in 1966 and um, they must have decided to get that for Nigeria to host the 1977. I don't know why there should be any problem in that. If we want to host the um, one of 50 years now, you have to have the money and the wherewithal to do it because it's not something that anybody could just say, oh, I want to do first act at 50. Do you understand? So the country must be ready to fund and to do all this um, organization. It's not a joke because I remember that um, Nigeria started planning this thing since 1969 after the one that was done in Algeria. And they didn't get to do it until 1977. So it's, it's not something that anybody could just say, I want to do first tag in one year or in a few months. It will take years of planning and organizing this for you to be able to do it. I'm not aware of Nigeria and Senegal having problem about I think that, that is one. where also the role of the EU, um, EU. Of AU comes EU. in because um, it would be a shame if uh, Africa wants to do uh, that kind of thing at this time, then you go cap in hand to uh, the European Union to ask for funding, which is uh, the usual thing. And I don't think it's possible for any country to uh, tell you today, come, we are going to host 15,000 people just like that. So the EU should be more responsive, I think, mm -hmm. in uh, taking the lead in ensuring what uh, I mean, that this kind of thing happens. And um, on a final note, I think we should recognize that culture is a, is a basic need mm -hmm. and we should promote and preserve it. We are not uh, doing enough. Platforms like um, First Tech or whatever we want to call it should be created. Dakar, I said, is doing well, but um, at the same time, it worries that I mean, much of the funding comes uh, from outside. We should be able to fund our own cultural um, programs as a people, as a continent. Having said that, I think we have run out of time and um, we have to end it here. We thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. And we look forward to the 45th, yes, 45th um, anniversary.
You are all invited. 